Hi guys! Welcome to another episode of Attorney Javier Law Vlog. Today, we continue with our discussion on the Intellectual Property Code. And specifically for today, we'll be continuing our discussion on the Copyright Law of the Philippines, which is found in Republic Act No. 8293 as amended. Being an intellectual creation, it is one of the modes of acquiring ownership. So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Now, a like on this video or any of my other videos would also be greatly appreciated. You can also find me on Alex at www.alexlegal.ph Alex is an online directory of lawyers which makes it easy for people like you to connect with lawyers like me for legal assistance from the convenience of your mobile phones, laptops, or tablets. I will insert a link into my profile in the description below so you can easily reach out to schedule an appointment with me. Okay, now we can begin. So in the last episode, we discussed the rights offered by a copyright, the works covered and not covered, and the duration of protection as well as registration of a copyright. Now we go into the violation of the copy copyright owner's rights, or otherwise known as infringement which is the copying of substantial portions or even the whole of a copyrighted work without the consent of the owner. Now, infringement is also known as piracy or even plagiarism, where the offender appropriates the whole, parts, or the language of the composition, passing it off as his own. It happens where a person copies parts of the work or even the whole work of another and I give it appearance that it came from me, okay? Now, uh, section, one, uh, section 216 of the Intellectual Property Code says that a person infringes a right protected under this act when one directly commits an infringement, no? He directly commits the infringement. Second, he benefits from the infringing activity of another person who commits an infringement if the person benefiting has been given notice of the infringing activity and has the right and ability to control the activities of the other person. Or, third, with knowledge of the infringing activity, induces, causes, or materially contributes to the infringing conduct of another. So I mentioned that it is not necessary that the whole of the work is copied. Infringement will still exist if a substantial portion or portions of the work would be copied, such as what happened in the case of Habana versus Robles. Now, Habana and the petitioners are the authors and copyright owners of a copyright over their published work, which are certain textbooks for the English subject in schools, no? When petitioners were in the process of revising their work, they scouted different bookstores to check on the competition. No? They wanted to see other textbooks dealing with the same subject. And in the course of their search, they found the respondents' work, okay, their published work, which was strikingly similar to the contents, scheme of presentation, illustration, and examples in petitioners' own published work. Some examples were even very obvious. Like he died, uh, one example was he died on April 15, 1975, as stated in petitioner's work, while in respondent's work, it appeared as he died on April 25, 1975. So it was the date that was changed. Another example is Miss Reyes li lives in 214 Taft Avenue, Manila, as it appears in petitioner's work, while in respondent's work, it appeared as Miss Reyes's address is 214 Taft Avenue, Manila. Okay? Other examples were even copied directly word for word, okay, from petitioner's work onto respondent's own work. 
Now, in ruling that respondents had lifted substantial portions of the discussion and examples from, from petitioner's work, the Supreme Court said that substantial reproduction of a book does not necessarily require that the entire copyrighted work or even a large portion of it be copied. The test, this is what you take note of, the test is if so much is taken that the value of the original work is substantially dis diminished, then there is an infringement of copyright and, to an injurious extent, the work is therefore appropriated. Okay? In determining the question of infringement, the amount of matter copied from the copyrighted work is an important consideration. To constitute infringement, it is not necessary that the whole or even a large portion of the work shall have been copied. If so much is taken that the value of the original is sensibly diminished, or the labors of the original author are substantially and to an injurious extent appropriated by another, then that is sufficient in the point of law to constitute piracy. Infringement of a copyright is a trespass on a private domain. Okay, that private domain is owned and occupied by the owner of the copyright, and therefore it is protected by law. Infringement of a copyright or piracy consists in the doing by any person without the consent of the owner of the copyright of anything the sole right to do which is conferred by law on the owner of the copyright. Now take note even a copy of a pirated work is still an infringement of the original and it is no defense that the pirate in such cases did not know whether or not he was infringing any copyright. What matters is that he at least knew that, he that uh, what he was copying was not his and he copied at his peril. In cases of infringement, copying alone is not what is prohibited. The copying must produce an injurious effect. It must cause injury, such as when the copy was circulated for commercial law, for a commercial use. No, kumita yung uh, uh, yung pirate, no, without acknowledging the original authors as the source. The least that the respondents could have done in this case of Habana was to acknowledge the petitioners in their work. You cite them as sources, no? As the source of their examples, okay? To allow another to copy the book without the appropriate acknowledgement is injury enough, no? This actually brings to mind the U.S. Uh, case of uh, Farrell versus... Uh, I forget, no? And I'm not going to discuss that today, but that's also interesting uh, to note, no? Where Farrell uh, was held to uh, have infringed on the estate of Marvin Gaye for the song Blurred Lines, no? Uh, it was found, if I recall properly, no? It was found that substantial portions of the uh, riffs, the musical riffs from Marvin Gaye's songs were uh, substantially similar to those in the song Blurred Lines by Pharrell and it was done without attribution or acknowledgement to Marvin Gaye. So you might want to look that up, okay? But to continue, take note that copyright infringement in the Philippines no, is a crime which does not take into account the intent of the offender, okay? It is the act of infringement, not the intent, which causes the damage. In this regard, good faith is not a defense. In other words, lack of knowledge of infringement is not a valid defense. Knowledge of the infringement is presumed when the infringer commits the prohibited act. Now, to determine whether infringement exists, you should remember the ultimate aim of a copyright, which is primarily about providing the strongest possible protection for the copyright owners so that they can have the highest possible incentive to create more works. Okay, the control given to the copyright owners is only a means to an end, which is the promotion of knowledge and learning. Achieving that underlying goal of the copyright law also requires access to copyrighted works and re it requires permitting certain kinds of uses of copyright works without the permission of the copyright owner. However, 
intellectual property rights such as copyright and the neighboring right against rebroadcasting, these establish an artificial and limited monopoly in order to reward creativity. Without these legally enforceable rights, creators will have extreme difficulty recovering their costs and capturing the surplus or profit of their works as reflected in their markets. This is based on the theory that the possibility of gain due to creative work creates an incentive which may improve efficiency or simply enhance consumer welfare or utility. More creativity redounds to the public good. Okay, so you remember the purpose of the copyright law. If you remember the purpose, then you will have an easier time to determine whether there is infringement. So what are the remedies? Okay, in case of infringement, the law allows for the following remedies. First, of course, injunction to stop the infringement. Second, payment of actual damages or in lieu thereof, statutory damages. Third, impounding and or destruction of the infringing articles, all other copies, and the means to create those copies. There are also other forms of damages such as moral and exemplary damages and there is also the penalty for imprisonment. The lowest is for one year for the first offense with the highest being for nine years for the third or subsequent offenses. Take note that the action for damages may only be brought within four years from the time the cause of action arose. That is the prescriptive period. Take note that the law provides for limitations on copyright, meaning that there are certain situations where the use of the copyrighted work is permissible and will therefore not constitute infringement. And this is found in Section 184 of the Intellectual Property Code. First, the reproduction or distribution of published articles or materials in a specialized format exclusively for the use of the blind, visually, and reading impaired persons, okay? So, uh, for the blind and visually reading impaired persons, those are the keywords, provided, of course, that they are made on a non-profit basis and shall indicate the copyright owner and the date of the original publication. Second limitation, the recitation or performance of a work once it has been lawfully made accessible to the public if it is done privately and free of charge or if made strictly for a charitable or religious institution or society. Okay, that's a limitation on copyright and in, and in that case, it will not infringe the copyright. Okay, third, the making of quotations. Okay, the quotations from a published work if they are compatible with fair use and only to the extent justified for the purpose. You do not quote the whole book. Okay? Okay, this include quotations from newspaper articles and periodicals, etc. Provided, of course, that you cite the source. No? You put the name of the author if it appears on the work. Okay, you mentioned that. Fourth, the reproduction or communication to the public by mass media of articles on current political, social, economic, scientific, or religious topics, and also lectures, ad addresses, and other works of the same nature, which are delivered in public if such use is for information purposes and has not been expressly reserved, and in which case, in order not to constitute uh, an infringement, you cite the source, okay? To be safe, always just cite the source. Fifth, the reproduction and communication to the public of literary, scientific, or artistic works as part of reports of current events by means of photography, cinemato c cinematography, or broadcasting to the extent necessary for the purpose. Sixth limitation, okay? Remember again, huh? these uh, limitations mean that there is no infringement. Sixth, the inclusion of a work in a publication, broadcast, or other communication to the public, sound recording, or film, 
if such inclusion is made by way of illustration for teaching purposes and is compatible with fair use, provided again, cite the source, meaning the name of the author. Seventh, the recording made in schools, universities, or educational institutions of a work included in a broadcast for the use of such schools, universities, or educational institutions and provided, okay, take note of this, that such recording must be deleted within a reasonable period after they were first broadcast and provided further that such recording may not be made from audiovisual works which are part of the general cinema repertoire of feature films except for brief experts uh, uh, brief excerpts sorry okay eighth eighth limitation the making of ephemeral meaning uh, temporary recordings by a broadcasting organization by means of its own facilities and for use in its own broadcast ninth the use made of a work by or under the direction or control of the government by the national library or by educational scientific or professional institutions where such use is in the public interest and compatible with fair use tenth the public performance or the communication to the public of a work in a place where no admission fee is charged with respect to such public performance or communication which is done by a club or, inst or charitable institution educational institution whose aim is not profit making okay so uh, basta free no so uh, in that case that public performance will not constitute a uh, an infringement 11th limitation a public display of the original or a copy of the work not made by means of a film slide television image or otherwise on screen or by means of any other device or process provided that either the work has been published or that the original or the copy displayed has been sold given away or otherwise transferred to another person by the author or his successor and twelfth limitation any use made of a work for the purpose of any judicial proceedings or for the giving of a prof of professional advice by a legal practitioner so in any of these cases if a person makes use of the copyrighted work he will not be liable for infringement moreover the law provides the doctrine of fair use under section 185 take note of this doctrine of fair use and this doctrine says that the fair use of a copyrighted work for criticism comment news reporting teaching including creating multiple copies for classroom use scholarship research and similar purposes is not an infringement of copyright again the fair use of a copyrighted work for criticism comment news reporting teaching scholarship research and similar purposes is not an infringement of copyright in determining whether the use made of a work in any particular case is fair use the factors to be considered shall include first the purpose and character of the use including whether the use is for a commercial nature or for non-profit educational purposes of course that will matter because uh, if uh, profit is gained from uh, that uh, publication or transmission to the public then uh, that that may be considered as uh, no longer fair use it will depend of course no second the nature of the copyrighted work third the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole and fourth the effect of the use upon the potential market or value of the copyrighted work okay now we also have what is known as decompilation 
which is the reproduction of the code and translation of the forms of the computer program to achieve interoperability of an independently created computer program with other programs. Okay? And uh, the compilation may also constitute fair use to the extent that such decompilation is done for the purpose of obtaining the information necessary to achieve such interoperability so that the pro programs can work better together. Okay? Take note that the fact that a work is unpublished shall not by itself bar a finding of fair use if such finding is made upon the consideration of all the factors that I just mentioned. Now, what about reproduction of <coughs> published works like books, no? photocopy or Xerox? No? Some of you may be uh, guilty of that. <coughs> this is allowed under Section 187. And Section 187 says that the private reproduction of a published work in a single copy where the reproduction is made by a natural person exclusively for re research and private study, that shall be permitted. Okay? But if you do it uh, mass production and uh, you do it uh, for commercial use, then that is prohibited. Okay, that's where infringement comes in now. Okay, and of course, the if the reproduction is made without the authorization of the copyright owner, then that will definitely be infringement. Okay, the exception again is where the reproduction is made by, the, by a natural person exclusively for research and privacy and private study. Take note, however, that the reproduction does not extend to first a work of architecture in the form of building or other construction take note that copyright in a work of architecture shall include the right to control the erection of any building which reproduces the whole or a substantial part of the work either in, in its original form or in any form recognizably derived from the original provided, of course, that the copyright in any such work shall not include the right to control the reconstruction or rehabilitation in the same style as the original of a building to which that copyright relates. <clears throat> Second, the reproduction does not extend to the entire book or a substantial portion thereof or of a musical work in graphic form by reprographic means. Third, a compilation of data and other materials. Fourth, a computer program except as provided in Section 189. And fifth, any work in cases where reproduction would unreasonably conflict with a normal exploitation of the work or would otherwise unreasonably prejudice the legitimate interests of the author. In other words, if you photocopy the whole book, then you're already definitely uh, depriving the copyright owner of his economic right to earn profit from the sale of his original work. Okay, so in that case, you cannot photocopy the whole book. Just uh, the portion you need. Moreover, any library <clears throat> or archive whose activities are not for profit may without the authorization of the author or the copyright owner that library may make a limited number of copies of the work as may be necessary for such institutions to fulfill their mandate <coughs> in the following cases first where the work by reason of its fragile character or rarity cannot be lent to the user in its original form. In that case, since uh, masisira-sira na yung libro, maybe because it's very old, the, libra the library can make a reproduction. Next, where the works are isolated articles contained in composite works or brief portions of other published works and the reproduction is necessary to supply them when this is considered expedient to persons requesting their loan for purposes of research or study instead of lending the volumes or booklets which contain them kasi baka masyadong marami okay third where the making of such limited copies is in order to preserve and, if necessary, in the event that it is lost, destroyed, or rendered unusable, replace a copy or to uh, 
or to replace in the permanent collection of another similar library or archive a copy which has been lost, destroyed, or rendered unusable or no longer available. Okay? What about the reproduction of computer programs? No? Under Section 189, the reproduction in one backup copy or adaptation of a computer program shall be permitted without the authorization of the owner or the author of or other owner of the copyright in a computer program by the lawful owner of that computer program. In short, you can make one backup of the copy even without authorization provided that the copy or adaptation is necessary for either of the following cases now first the use of the computer program in conjunction with a computer for the purpose and to the extent for which the computer program has been obtained and second archival purposes and for the replacement of the lawfully owned copy of the computer program in the event that the lawfully obtained copy of the computer program is lost, destroyed, or rendered unusable. These purposes are exclusive. In other words, no copy or adaptation shall be used for any purpose other than those just mentioned. And if used for a different purpose, then of course such copy or adaptation shall be confiscated and destroyed. Take for example the case of Microsoft versus Comic Alley where probable cause for copyright infringement was shown to exist when Co Comic Alley was engaged in distributing and selling Microsoft computer software programs without authority. Here, in this case, the Supreme Court said that the gravamen of copyright infringement is not merely the unauthorized manufacturing of intellectual works, but rather the unauthorized performance of any of the economic rights of the copyright owner. Hence, any person who performs any of the economic rights without obtaining the copyright owner's prior consent renders himself civilly and criminally liable for copyright infringement. Therefore, in this case, there was no need for petitioner to still prove who copied, who actually copied, replicated, or reproduced the software programs. The mere sale by uh, Comic Alley of the illicit copies of the software programs was enough by itself to show that probable cause exists to warrant the filing of an information for copyright infringement against uh, Comic Alley. As for the limitations on the specific rights granted to performers, producers, and broadcasters, which are, as I discussed in the previous episode, the neighboring or related rights, these are the limitations. Okay, First, the use by a natural person exclusively for his own personal purposes. Second, using short excerpts for reporting current events. Third, the use solely for the purpose of teaching or for scientific research. And fourth, fair use of the broadcast. So those acts I just mentioned, they, they will not constitute infringement. And finally, we also have Republic Act Number no. 10088 or the Anti-Camcording Act of 2010. This is what you see in trailers before watching a movie. The example is the short film with Derek Ramsey saying, Pare, police ako. Okay? So this law makes it unlawful for any person at a time when the copyright subsists in a cinematographic film or other audiovisual work or its soundtrack and without the authorization of the copyright owner or exclusive license, licensee thereof to first, these are the prohibited acts first, to use or attempt to use an audiovisual recording device to transmit or to make a copy of any performance in an exhibition facility of such film or other audiovisual work or its soundtrack or any part thereof second to have in his or her possession an audiovisual recording device in an exhibition facility with the intent of using or an attempt to use the audiovisual recording device to transmit or make a copy of the performance in the theater no? uh, where the film or so its soundtrack is being exhibited. 
And the third way of uh, violating this law is to aid, abet, or connive in the commission of the prohibited acts that I just mentioned. A person who is found guilty of committing any of those acts will be subject to a fine. You can see this in that same short film, no? Fine of 50,000 pesos but not exceeding 750,000 pesos and imprisonment of six months and one day to six years and one day. Any recording seized may be ordered, destroyed by the court. And in this regard, the cinema or theater is required to conspicuously, po conspicuously post in at least two areas notices or signages warning against the bringing of audiovisual recording devices into the cinema or theater. You can just deposit it with the guard or uh, whoever there, no? So, uh, the responsible person, of course, no? So that's it for uh, this episode on uh, copyright infringement, plagiarism, and piracy, okay? So I hope you may have picked up a thing or two, and I hope to see you next time. See you soon, guys. Bye.